Now this, you're gonna like. This next uh, improvement or upgrade is something we've done on the last three RVs we've had. Uh, it's not that much of a difficult job, but with the Integra, the way the water bay is, you may want to ask Integra to do this for you unless you're really handy. So let's have a look and see what this, uh, this improvement or this upgrade is. As you can see, there's a blue water tank, which is a pressure tank, as used on central heating systems. And basically what this does, I think this is a two gallon tank, and this is um, plumbed in line with the outlet of the water pump. So this will basically fill up with two gallons of water, which is under pressure which means through the night, if you want to use the toilet, the pump, which is situated just below one side of the bed in one of the bay lockers, the pump doesn't run because the water is being supplied from that pressure tank. And the only time that the pump will now run is to refill that tank. Other advantages of this is you get a constant water pressure. So you, you, you don't get the surging anymore. Now obviously, when you're having a shower, um, the pump will be running because A, it will be filling up the uh, pressure vessel and B, it will be supplying you uh, the usage for the shower. But it's a great, very easy thing to put in. I think the tank costs $60 um, and you've just got to plumb it in line with the outlet of the water pump. So you'll have to crawl in there and find the, the, um, the tube cut into it if you're going to do it yourself make sure you use the right clips because you know these are under this line is under pressure so you don't want uh, you don't want an indoor pool this is a fantastic invention this uh, someone called uh, Randy at uh, the last rally told me about this product. It's called Norwex. I'll put a link or I'll put the name at the end of this video. And it's actually, I believe, it's actually a dishcloth. And it's got, I think it's got like silicon encrusted in the cloth. And it is just the best for removing bugs off the front of the RV or, or the window. It just, it just takes them off as though they're not there. I mean, it's just incredible. It doesn't scratch. It's completely non-abrasive. And it makes taking bugs off the front completely effortless. So if you look at this, a classic you know, dead bean on the front. It's quite difficult to, to actually get off. You just use this cloth. And there's another one just above the wiper here. And it's just, it is, it's almost like magic. And look at the ones on the screen just above the wiper. These are, these are all sort of dried on and gooey. So just wipe it with this cloth. And off they come. It's, it is quite amazing. We get the bugs off with this cloth before we wash the coach, um, so that way we get all the bugs off the front, we wash the coach, we rinse it with the spotless uh, water cleaner, and then it leaves it a completely uh, spotless, clean finish. It's a great product, and it's great for windows. Uh, you can clean your shower with this as well. It's, I don't know what's in it, but it, it feels abrasive, but it's not. It must be some sort of silicon or nylon, but it definitely, definitely doesn't scratch. There's some more here, just under the wiper in the middle here. Just a quick wipe. I mean, it's just effortless. Absolutely effortless. So, once you get your new Integra, there's something you're gonna have to do. Well, I mean, we did mention this three times when it went back for snagging, but, uh, Listen, it's not a big deal, it's so easy to fix, but basically when your coach is delivered these wipers will be so tight, they do up the nuts so tight that it will be fixed in a position. 
Now that's great if the, win if the screen, if the windshield was flat, but the windshield curves in and around. So these have to move, these have to be loose. And we had a situation before we loosened them where it wouldn't actually wipe the water off the screen. It only actually wiped a third of the screen. Yeah. So this is the nut, I believe it's a 10 mil spanner. Uh, this is the nut you need to undo. Undo that a couple of turns and undo it at the top a couple of turns and make sure that your wiper moves freely. And that way, when your wipers are on, you'll get a beautiful clean swipe of the window. I need to look at while you're doing the wipers, after you've tightened them up, just make sure that these, um, these jets here, there's one, two, three, four, and then there's two at the back. There's actually six jets on each wiper arm. So with a small pin, you just put it in, adjust it, try it, put it in, adjust it. It'll probably take you 10 minutes to do both wipers, but um, the way they come, the, basically all the jets are just pointed in one very small area. And when you look at the, the length of the wiper blade, you can adjust these jets. So basically you get three jets on the top and three jets on the bottom, and you get a nice clean swipe of the screen. Now one of the things you're definitely going to have to do, and you're probably going to have to do it yourself, is open this vent. Because by default, it will be clipped closed. And then what they do before they put this cover on, they clip it closed in the factory when they build it, and then they spray over it. And some people have had to cut away the paint. I mean, fortunately ours opened quite easily. And then we've, we did put some Velcro, but the, I think the adhesive's gone on it. But basically, I'm gonna Velcro this open so it doesn't flap. Now, obviously, if we store the vehicle for any amount of time, we'll clip that closed, and that way it stops. It's meant to stop rodents, but the problem is if this vent is closed, um, any cooking you do inside the vehicle uh, will cause a smoke alarm uh, to go off. And you probably find that most dealers that you buy from, um, they won't tell you about this at all. So. I mean, a bit of a short-sightedness is because if they made these catches a bit longer or this a bit shorter, these could actually clip on the outside here and here and it, it would stop the flapping when you're driving along. So if this shroud was literally an eighth of an inch shorter, um, these little clips, they've got little lugs on them, they would probably just clip on the outside. But there you go. I suppose uh, over time there'd be a bit of progress. Or I mean, better still, it would be that you could operate a lever inside, maybe, maybe uh, at the top of the microwave there's a fascia plate, maybe a lever that you just open in the summer and close in the winter, because it is a pain in the ass. it really, really is. And we didn't know about it for, for four months, so the smoke alarm kept going off, and we had to ask Integra to put another smoke alarm in. Now, they, they did put another smoke alarm in, um, and we've got two smoke alarms now when really we didn't need to. We only needed one. And <laughs> when I mentioned this, the response was, oh, um, oh, I don't know about that. So even the people in the factory didn't, you know, in the, in the repair shop, didn't even know about this flap. So just, uh, you know, just to give it a heads up, you need this flap opened. The dealer probably won't have opened it and then you'll be forever standing there waving a magazine or a cushion at the smoke detector. Even just a, anything, you, anything you cook at all, it will, it will set it off. So that's a, another little tip for you. Something I'm going to show you now is the, uh, the dryer vent for the uh, tumble dryer for clo uh, drying clothes. It's, it's in a, actually quite a good place. It's, it's here in the engine compartment, which is good. Which is not a problem with that. And it's here. Now, the way Integra put this in is two massive great screws in the side. And the way, what we've done, we've already taken this off once to clean it. And we just hold it now with a big cable tie, or I think you call them zip ties. But the screws they put in, they put in in the most ridiculous place that you can't clearly get to. But 
Once you've struggled with this and taken the screws out, you take the whole vent assembly off, clean it, let it dry, and then just put a big, a big zip tie around it to hold it. But this, if it's blocked, will prevent your, uh, your dryer from, uh, from working properly. So that's where the vent is if you need to know. A couple more tips that, uh, it, you know, don't forget, some, some people watching this, this the, the RV they'll be picking up soon, they've never, they've never had an RV before. So, I mean, a lot of people know these things. Um, but, you know, if, if you know them, great. And if you're new to it and it helps, well, that's, that's um, even better. We've got an inline filter here. We got this from Camping World. I think it was about $25, $30. So basically, this will filter um, mainly the hardness in the water, the calcium. Get yourself one of these. They're very inexpensive. Use one a season and then, and then throw it. And we've also got an inline um, restrictor because there's not often you'll get huge pressure on a campsite, but if you do, if it's above 50 or 55, that could seriously, um, I don't think the plumbing inside your RV um, will cope with anything over 55. So you want to be careful, otherwise uh, if it bursts a pipe inside, you'll come back after a day out to a, uh, a coach full of water. So this has got a little restricting, um, a little regulator screw on the top. I don't know if you can see that with a camera. And you can, you can set your own pressure. So irrespective of the pressure coming, coming from the um, faucet, you can actually fix it. We fixed ours at, what is it? Well, I think it's about 40. Well, it's only showing 40 now because the pressure of this particular campsite isn't very much. But ours stops at 50. Now, carrying on, on, the, on the water theme, I just explain why we are walking around with this, this cable linked to, to a very short uh, cord is our other video camera that we use. Um, the input for the microphone is packed up. So we're, we're literally down to the wire, Touch as they say. So as you fill up going through your initial filter, as I just explained, when you're filling up your tank, it will go through the first filter, the blue one I've just explained. It will then go through this filter um, to fill up your tank. And then the two drinking water taps inside the RV then also go through this filter. So the water is actually filtered three times for drinking. So you should, you should be fairly safe. And these you can, get, you, can, you can get anywhere. I think you can get them in the Home Depot actually. One of the things we purchased when, when we were at Quartzside were these tire covers. Now, we'd never, we've never had tire covers before, um, and, we, and we live in a very hot place, but I see so many people with them, and I've asked and spoken to so many people, and it's the heat that destroys your tires. So, these tire covers, we bought uh, a set of six. The ones on the front are a slightly different size, they were very, very cheap. I think they were like $10 or something, um, $10 a set. They're so easy to put on. They're, they're almost as easy to put on as the uh, snow socks that I mentioned on the video when we were up in Colorado. They're just elasticated. And boy, do they protect your tires. And also to sort of, to get a matching set of uh, handbag and shoes, if you like, we got the mirror covers. Um, I mean, white's not my chosen color, but I don't know, it makes it look clean. So we got covers for the mirrors, covers for the tires, and we got covers for the um, wiper blades. Because anything rubber in this heat, and we're in Arizona now, and it's not, you know, it's just the start of summer, and we're already up in the mid 90s. So uh, these are just Velcro, you know, they just come in one size, but because of our wiper blades are so big, we bought three. In fact, we bought one set, and he gave us one free, and we've just cut one in half to. Uh, so they fit the whole blade. I went to check the Hoover bag and lo and behold, there's no bag in it at all. So, yeah, I mean, should I have checked? Well, you would have thought the dealer would have put a bag on, but they have given us a bag, but you would have thought it would have a bag on it. So now, 
we've got all this crud I've got to clean out. Uh, it's just another example that dealers really, I have to say, once they've got your money, there's not a lot they want to do for it. So, you know, once again, once again, totally unimpressed with the dealer network or the certain the dealer we bought it from, which was RV1. Um, clearly, this vehicle didn't have a PDI, a pre-delivery inspection. They literally it arrived, they washed it, and then they gave it to me. So, a uh, bit of a shame, you know, not, not the way, best way to start a Saturday morning, but I suppose you get used to it after a while that uh, if you want it job done, you've got to do it yourself. So, if you're watching this and you've just picked up an Integra, just check for a, um, a Hoover bag. Top tip for you, get yourself one of these products. Uh, as you've seen the previous video, you already know that uh, I can get a discount for you and I'll give you a code at the end. What a great product. So, don't leave home without it. That's it, all done. 25 minutes, start to finish the car. No polish, or I just did a wash, rinse. So, if you've got one of these, or one of these, you need one of these. Brilliant product. So, we hope that some of these, uh, some of these tips and some of the things that uh, that we've shown you, you know, for those guys who are new to RVing, you know, I hope it helps. If there's anything you're not sure of or you need to know, just send us an email or post a comment on our YouTube channel. And uh, if we can't help, and I'm sure there, there'll be someone out there who can. Something else just worth mentioning. This, these devices will save you a divorce. When we're parking, the one thing we do well, and we do really slick, is we park really well. First of all, because A, I'm a brilliant driver, as you would expect. Um, but seeing wives, you know, do all this sort of business makes us laugh because, first of all, it doesn't mean anything. And secondly, the husband, normally, is the one driving, and that's not a sexist remark, it's just normally it's the, the husband driving and the wife giving directions. So don't all jump at me going, well, I drive. Um, they don't even look at the wife's directions because they don't know what they mean. Get yourself some walkie-talkies, some good walkie-talkies. I mean, these, um, they're brilliant. Uh, they're called Cobra. We got them in uh, Best Buy. And basically, the only person I'll listen to when I'm manoeuvring is Julia. It doesn't matter how many men are out there, you know, giving me all these, you know, back a bit, up a bit, that left, I take no notice. And in 15 years of driving RVs all around Europe, Switzerland, France, Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Holland, Portugal, Spain, uh, Italy, America, we've not once hit anything. Now, that's not tempting fate, but it's because we manoeuvre slowly and I listen to Julia, who can obviously see the low tree branch or see the concrete block on the floor that I can't see in my mirrors. So really get yourself some of these. Something else that I think you'll find of interest is you need to join some clubs because camping can be really expensive. I mean, if you go down to Florida, you'll be paying uh, you'll probably be paying $100, $120 a night. Now, if you want to stay there a month, you know, that's three and a half grand. That's a lot of money. We joined Thousand Trails, um, which is a, it's almost like a timeshare for campsites, I suppose. And um, basically we can stay in, of all the Thousand Trails all throughout America on our, on the list that you get as a platinum member, we can stay in any campsite for 30 days, completely free of charge. And because it is limited to 30 days, it just means that after 30 days, you have to move out of that campsite, go out of the park, and then you can come back for another 30 days. If they've got space, they'll let you stay longer. Now, these cost thousands and thousands, and it costs about $500 a year. Um, we haven't actually used our thousand trails um, to its full potential. Send me a private email because 
we're looking at selling this um, and passing it on. So once you've purchased uh, this, this Thousand Trails membership, you can stay in all the sites uh, across America for 30 days at any one time, completely free of charge. So you get your money back in no time at all. There's a couple of more, a couple more clubs um, worth joining. One is called RPI, and with RPI, Resort Park International, I think they're called. I think that's what it stands for. But uh, they've got parks all over the US as well. Good Sam is another one. With the Good Sam's Club, you'll get 10% discount. We've also joined KOA and another one called Coast to Coast. All offer you a discount, some more than others. But Thousand Trails is the only one where you'll be able to stay free of charge. But of course, you paid a premium uh, to join in the first place. So I hope you found these, uh, these two videos, part one and part two, of interest. And uh, happy, happy camping or happy RVing, as they say. And uh, be safe.